So welcome to the lesson and the first starter activity we have is to do with baked foods. So baked foods like cakes, breads and pastries have a light and airy textures. Describe how baked goods become light and airy. Um, for this, you're going to have to research online. You can use books or newspapers or whatever else um, will help. And in here as well, I would like you to use the sentence starters. So they're in the middle in red. You can see that you can use I found the reason why most cakes, breads and pastries have light and airy textures are because and then your answer. So you're answering in full sentences and then ending it in a conclusion. For those who would want the challenge, can you find and name the ingredients uh, self and self-raising flour? So why is self-raising flour easier to use than other flours when it comes to baking light and fluffy cakes? Because there is more than one flour. You have plain flour, self-raising flour and strong flour. So what are the added ingredients in self-raising flour? What is its predominant ingredient? And why is it easier to use than other flours when it comes to baking light and fluffy cakes? Spend 10 minutes on this task, so pause here and spend 10 minutes on this starter activity. Our three learning areas of today's learning objectives um, require so that all students will define and recognize how raising agents work within baked goods. So looking at raising agents and how they work within um, scones, breads, cakes, etc., and how they work. Number two, most students will be able to interpret within their writing how chemical raising agents take effect in baked goods. So being able to write in those full sentences and be able to describe how these chemical raising agents work. And then some students will understand how to compare and develop their raising agent knowledge um, to their advantage when using them within practical. So as well as in the writing, um, being able to transfer those skills um, learned within this lesson and then transferring them into a practical using chemical raising agents or other raising agents that we will be looking at. Um, and please use the keywords below with chemical reaction, acids, alkalis, baked goods, CO2 and texture for sensory analysis. How would you describe the different textures of these foods? And also they are known as baked goods and why are they called this? So spend five minutes on this task, pause here, spend five minutes on um, thinking about how you can describe these different textures of foods and um, why they are called baked goods. The descriptions that I have for these baked goods are fluffy, flaky, spongy, delicate, airy, chewy, and crumbly. So these are all sensory words that we use within food and nutrition to describe um, such products. So these sensory textures that are produced in these baked goods, the fluffiness, the airiness, and so on, um, is caused by a raising agent. And a raising agent is an ingredient or process that introduces gas and or air into a mixture so that it becomes light and airy when it's cooked. So raising agents can be added or created using certain techniques and ingredients for the overall desired effect. We have here the chemical raising agents, which is our kind of main focus um, for this lesson. Um, and you can see there baking powder, cream of tartar, bicarb um, and self-raising flour. Also whisking to create air. So when you're making meringues for that in, in, um, for the purpose of the picture there, whisking egg whites to incorporate air and also yeast, which is a biological raising agent, and it's usually used for breads, but given the right conditions of warmth, time, um, and moisture and food, it will create a fermentation process and therefore helping breads to rise. So raising agents are used because consumers like ourselves expect baked products such as bread, cakes, and scones to have a light and open and soft spongy texture because without these raising agents, it, the products would be flat, they would be chewy. Uh, they wouldn't have that light, light airiness that we all desire when we're eating cake, scones, and so on. I'd like you to pause the presentation here and I would like you to research um, again, using online sources or newspapers, books, etc. Uh, maybe there's something, uh, there's a recipe books in the kitchen. 
and I would like you to find out how many types of uh, chemical raising agents are there that are used for baked goods. So I'm focusing, we're focusing here, sorry, on chemical raising agents. And what do they produce during the cooking process when they're being used? I'd like you to spend five minutes on this task. Um, so pause the presentation here. How many chemical raising agents can you find and what do they produce during the cooking process? It is worth asking at this stage if or where you have seen this model before. That's right, it's the pH scale and the pH is a measure of how acidic or alkaline water is. So the range goes from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral. You can see there 7 in the middle, which is for pure water. So pH less than 7 indicate acidity. So if you go to the left, uh, where it's more red, where it's acidic, you have gastro um, or gastric acid, uh, lemon juice, apple juice, they're classed as acidic. Then you go further up the scale, so above 7, and then you go into the like 12, 13, 14. This indicates a base of alkaline, so bleach, um, ammonia, um, and concentrated solutions of alkalis. Um, so this is your pH scale that you'll see later refers to how chemical raising agents work. So bicarbonate of soda, so it's known as an alkali, which is used to raise soda breads and full flavoured cakes like gingerbread, fruit cake, chocolate cake and carrot cake. So they're full flavoured cakes. Um, it needs an acid to activate it. Um, so this acid comes in the form of yogurt, cream of tartar, buttermilk or milk or lemon juice. So bicarbonate of soda gives off carbon dioxide, which expands in the mixture. Um, and once the mixture is cooked, the carbon dioxide is replaced by air, leaving the cake um, or bread nice and light. But adding too much bicarb can result in a peaked or collapsed cake or unpleasant or strong flavour and a greenish tinge. What I would like you to do is again, go away, research um, and in your own words, write and summarise about bicarbonate of soda. Spend five minutes on this task. I'd like you to do the same with cream of tartar. So cream of tartar, um, for my summary, technically cream of tartar is an acid, so tartaric acid. So it's a byproduct of winemaking and it forms in the inside of wine barrels. It can be added into beaten egg whites to stabilize them and increase their volume, um, for example, meringues. So for example, if you don't have cream of tartar and you want to stabilize those lovely meringues, you can always replace it with lemon juice because it's acidic. So for cream of tartar, in your own words, I'd like you to write and summarise what you can find or what you understand about cream of tartar. Pause here, spend five minutes on the task. Baking powder is activated when liquid is added, producing carbon dioxide and forming bubbles that cause the mixture to expand, so to get bigger. For this reason, it's important to get your cake mixture into the oven quickly once the wet ingredients have been added to the dry ingredients. So self-raising flour is made from plain flour combined with a small amount of baking powder. In your own words, I would like you again to write and summarise what you can find or what you understand about baking powder. Pausing here and spending five minutes on this task. So from our research, or what you could say from your research, is that cream of tartar is acid-based. Bicarbonate soda is alkaline based and cream of tartar plus baking soda equals baking powder. If you bring them together, you have baking powder. Now, when it relates to this pH scale, it could be said that baking powder then is the better chemical raising agent to use when baking goods because it's neutral. It's using an acid and an alkaline together to bring it together to make it a neutral product. Ultimately, this would then make a great hypothesis when it comes to experimenting within food science. Write this part for your notes. Spend five minutes on this task. Attached to the show by homework is this raising agents question sheet. Uh, what I would like you to do is answer the first two questions to do with the chemical raising agents. And then the other ones um, are going to require just that little bit more research to help complete the questions um, as it goes into other raising agents such as yeast, steam and air. For the last two questions, you have command words such as explain, and you also have another word there, uh, discuss, that you can see ringed in red. 
these um, command words require just that little bit more in terms of a sentence when it comes to answering these questions. I've given you examples there of how to start a sentence, so I'd like you to use those in regards to answering those questions for the last two questions. Once you've answered the sheet attached about raising agents, I'd like you to go back to our learning objectives, pick one or more of the questions below to show what you have learned. So using the keywords which are below, chemical reaction, acids and alkalis, etc. Um, I'd like you to use um, sentences to then explain or show what you have learned about raising agents. So first one being um, all students, so all of us um, talking about raising agents are used in what? What do they do for baked goods? Number two, chemical raising, raising agents are used in, and how do they produce these light and airy textures? So forwarding your knowledge into chemical raising agents. And then when, it, when I come to use chemical raising agents in baking, I, know now, I now know that, or I will make sure that. So number three is forwarding your knowledge and showing that you understand it that much that then you can forward it into your own cooking, to your own practicals and to use it to your advantage. So using the keywords, answer one or more of those questions um, using the keywords and spend 10 minutes on this task.